Hey, what's going on? Matt here with Flight Sim Guides. I wanted to come to you guys today because mostly I haven't seen you guys in a while. And I wanted to talk about uh, flight sims. What about the flight sim is going to help you guys get your, your private pilot license or your instrument rating? Um, is it even going to be helpful to you? So uh, that's what we're going to answer here in this video. So you can see my cat just walked in to, to check out what's going on. I've been sick for like three weeks. It has been horrible. Um, and I, it just, I haven't been able to get on and make videos. But if you guys build a PC, if you guys build a PC and a flight sim, is it going to help you? Is it going to do anything for you at all um, in terms of building uh, your your flight time or building your experience, your proficiency in getting a flight sim? So these are my thoughts. I, I would say procedurally, yes. Uh, is it going to give you real life proficiency? Probably not, um, but you can get... So here, I'm going to break this into two parts, two pieces, um, and that's, that's going to be... Uh, part one, pro private pilot, and part two is going to be instrument pilots. It, it, as a private pilot, is it going to help you? If you're going through your private pilot training, should you get a flight sim and bother doing this? This thing costs as much as, almost as much as a private pilot certificate. Um, so, I but if you're going to try to log time, which you can't even do, by the way, with a home flight simulator, I would say not to worry about it. Uh, as a private pilot, don't do it. Put your money into the aircraft. Go fly the aircraft. Learn how to fly the aircraft. Get out there and, and do everything that you can. Uh, the only thing that this thing really might be helpful for would be procedural uh, startup training and just kind of going through the checklist and armchairing it. It's just next level armchairing is really what you're getting out of it. So, so real quick, let's look at look at the difference between the BATD and the AATD. That's going to be your basic and advanced uh, tra training devices for your, your flight simulators, which you're mostly going to find in flight schools, by the way. You're not going to find these generally in somebody's basement uh, like this. What you're going to have here is uh, it's good for familiarization flights and maybe doing a few different things, but you're, you're not going to log flight hours on that, okay? You're going to have to use a BATD or an AATD, um, which again... You're probably going to find at your part 121 schools, or I'm sorry, 141 schools. Um, so a private pilot, you're going to be able to log. If you're at part 61, you might find one there. Um, and you can log more hours if you're at a, like an accredited school um, where you can build those hours for a private pilot. Most likely you're going to do that in the sim when you're doing the instrument portion. You have to fly. Basically, for your private pilot, you need like three hours of like instrument training, VOR tracking. Um, and that's probably where you're going to get it. And even with the AATD, it's still the same 2.5 hours, 5.25 hours. Um, so it's really not going to be that big of a difference um, between the two. Uh, chance, I mean, that's going to be what five, five hours. That, that's a pretty good chunk of time in an aircraft. That could be a thousand hours worth of flight time. You are going to have to do that dual, uh, most likely if you're doing the instrument training uh, portion of that. So um, where you're going to get the most bang for the buck with it, using an instrument trainer um, is uh, or using a flight simulator for training for for actual legal loggable flight training is with an instrument rating. So if you're working on your instruments, you can log a pretty decent amount of time um, towards your instrument training in an AATD if you have access to one of those. So I would say to throw your hours there, especially combined PPL and instrument rating, throw your 20 hours into the instrument rating, um, even if you get this far uh, with, with having a home home based flight simulator um, that's n not legal for logging, you can still use it for proficiency and familiarization for actually flying those instrument flights and getting used to what you're doing in the actual aircraft and learning the avionics. You can go that next step uh, with your with your flight training. So it would be worth setting something up. Um, it doesn't have to be the, to this level. Um, I put a, quite a bit of cash into mine into my setup even though the only thing that i really wanted in the first place was to learn how to use the garmin gn uh, the gns 530 and the 430 uh the aircraft that i was flying at the time was gns uh, had dual gns 430s and i i didn't I, I wasn't picking up on how to use those real quickly so i was like you know what i'll build a flight sim and i'll just buy 
a four thirty, and I'll get to know it. That was like a couple of hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Well, that turned into a lot more. So, um, that's what I got uh, out of that. Uh, but even even if you have something where you're able to get access to a BATD or an AATD, instrument currency is a big thing because a lot of people get their instrument ratings and they're not going to go in necessarily thinking, oh, I got to go fly my approaches um, and get get back to currency. So if you have access to these, it's going to make life a lot easier to go do your instrument currency in one of these uh, approved flight simulators, right? And where you can legally log those hours towards your instrument currency. Those are my, my thoughts. So uh, just a quick recap. If you're working towards your private pilot, I would say not to worry about a home flight simulator and probably uh, on some extent, probably not even to worry too much about it with a, you know, with a a BATD or an AATD and having to worry about that is really not that big of a deal. Um, But you you get in your instrument rating, I think it's going to be real helpful. Um, You're going to enjoy being able to to log these 20 hours uh, for one inside of a flight sim and save a little bit of money. Um, if you have access to that, especially at a Part 61 school, and then uh, having at least something something basic that you can do some some flight sim. Uh, I'm sorry, some flight yeah, some flight simulator flights, instrument rating, instrument type flights uh, on your home flight simulator that you can use just to become familiar with what you're about to do or what you did. Maybe you flew something and you're like, hey, I messed that up. Let me go see if I can get it right on the flight simulator tonight when I go home. So those are those are my thoughts, um, and I will leave you guys with that. Let me know what questions you have. Uh, if you like this kind of content, hit that like and subscribe button. I am going to uh, try to give you guys a little bit more content, but until I get this flight sim back up and running the way that I would like to, to be used, um, I'll probably be giving you guys a lot of B-roll <laughs> and um, just me with some talking head informative videos like this. So hopefully you found this. Uh, it's semi-helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments. And I'll catch up with you guys soon. All right, take care. Hey, if you haven't already done so, head over to EliteSimBuild.com. Grab a copy of our Home Flight Simulator Resource Guide. Do that thing where you click the button, give us your email address, and we will send you a copy of our simulator guides where you can get the resource list, the avionics reviews, a panel blueprint. So that way you guys can send that off to your panel guy, get all the parts and pieces that you need, You'll know exactly what software to pick up so you can get your Cessna 172 flight simulator built today.